Hey, what's going on, everybody? Big time commitment. Jamel Howard just committed. We're going to tell you why that's such a big deal for this Wisconsin Badgers team. All that and more in today's Locked On Badgers. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Ryan Herrings, your host of Locked On Badgers. Thank you again for making Locked On Badgers one of your first listens every single day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts, free and available on YouTube. Really, really appreciate everybody tuning in and listening. Today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And as promised, everybody, gigantic commitment, literally and figuratively, Jamel Howard, six foot three, 320 pound nose tackle out of Marist, Illinois, the fourth Illinois prospect to commit to the Badgers in this cycle. Mid three star guy. You know, and when I say gigantic commitment, when, when you talk recruiting, it's not just talent, right? It's fit. It is, does this person have a role on the team? Is he going to be a guy who helps fit the scheme, helps drive the program forward? Because this is a guy who's a mid-three star. He has an offer from in-state Illinois. And aside from that, there's a lot of not, I would say, not great offers. This is not an offer list that you look at and it, it bowls you over, but... This is such a need on Wisconsin's team to have a big plugger, a 320 pound, you know, cut off tree stump in the middle that you can't push over, right? You can push over a little tree. You can't push over a tree stump. And that's what you're getting with Jamel Howard. I've talked about this a lot. People, people will always tell you, people always say the nose tackle is, is gone in, in college football. We play basketball on grass, five out. We throw the ball around that big plugger nose tackle. You don't need that dude anymore. Well, in the, here's the thing in the big 10, you need that dude in the three, four defense, which Wisconsin runs and you don't need him every game. You don't need him uh, when Ohio state is putting four or five star receivers out there. You don't need them when you're playing Purdue or when you're playing, um, you know, some of the schools that really spread it out Minnesota with all their, their endless zone reads and quick, quick passes out to the boundary. But when you're playing Iowa, when you're playing Michigan state, when you're playing Michigan, you need that dude. The, the nose tackle in the 3-4 in modern college football is kind of like one of those things where you don't need it every down, but when you need it, you need it. And there's not a lot of guys on the roster that are 320 pounds. Howard's coming in at 320. I mean, Keanu Benton right now is 316, I believe. Right, And obviously, Howard's coming in. I mean, I'm not comparing him to Benton. Howard's going to have to reshape his body somewhat. Benton's a lot stronger. Obviously, he's been in the strength and conditioning program for four years. But this is the type of dude who comes in. He learns from Benton for a year. And for the next two or three years, if he develops and stays healthy, he's that anchor in the middle. Right, He's that guy who keeps people off the linebackers. He's that guy who makes it really hard to run in Wisconsin on first down, on second down. He's a guy who sets up. The, the second and long and the third and long where then Jim Leonard can unleash his bevy of linebackers and go that two, five, you know, defense that two, four defense that, you know, you only have one or two defensive linemen on the field at one time. You don't get to that defense. You don't get to that pass rush situation unless you stop the run on first down. That's why I've, I've said it for a while. I thought nose tackle was such a big, big need in this class. They needed to get somebody in the program that theoretically realistically could uh, replace Keanu Benton in a year or two and not be Keanu Benton. Keanu Benton's special, but to, to be just that, that plugger in the middle. And I, I, not only does Jamel Howard project to that, I actually think his film's pretty good. I don't think he's, he's not just a plugger. Howard is definitely not a guy who just leans on somebody with 320 pounds. He has, has good hand use. You know, he gets his hands on people right away. He's got some moves. He's able to get into the backfield a little disruptive. He even shows a motor, which I, I really love out of a 320 pounder. If the play gets, you know, around him or on the outside of him, he will try to chase it down. So he's a 320 pound guy that moves pretty well, has good hand use, pretty violent hands, has kind of a swim move. Like he'll rip and swim around offense alignment. So I think he's a guy who I don't want to, I don't want to peg him or sell him short as just that one or two down run stuffing defense alignment. But keep in mind, that's what Keanu Benton was the first two years he was at Wisconsin too. Like it, it's hard for a 320 pound guy to be a disruptive pass rusher. So I, I'm not going to expect that at Jamel Howard. I think at a minimum at a floor, right. And every player has to develop, every player has to stay healthy, but from a talent side, talent standpoint, from a film standpoint, from a size standpoint, I think his floor is to be a really good run plugger at Wisconsin. And quite frankly, that's a huge part of this defense. So you can look at the offer list and say, 
Yeah, we, we really just beat Illinois for this dude. But the the 3-4 defense that Wisconsin plays and that nose tackle is a little unique to Wisconsin, right? There's not a lot of other teams in the conference that prioritize that spot the way Wisconsin does. So this, much like a fullback, right? This this player, this that spot means more to Wisconsin than it means to an Ohio State or to a Penn State or to an Iowa who plays a 4-3, right? Nebraska's, I think, believe trans, transitioning into a 3-4 this year. But my point is, like, this is the type of commit that means a lot more to Wisconsin than a program that's running a 4-3 or a program that doesn't have the great linebacker play. This is a big-time commit. I love it. I think this is a huge, huge addition to this class. And he's not going to be a guy who, who's really flashy. This is not, like, a sexy commitment. It's not going to move our recruiting, our recruiting class up seven spots. But this is a winning commitment. This is a commitment that, that portends to wins, that leads to victories. Right. And he makes the program better. He fills a gigantic need on the roster. I love it. I think it's just an enormous pickup for Wisconsin. Also, you know, like we mentioned, it's the fourth Illinois guy to come on, on board. There's a couple more out there that they're still on. This is a, a class without that big in-state Wisconsin class that the, the program has leaned on for a bunch of years because the in-state Wisconsin high school class this year isn't that strong. They've had to go to other states and they've really mined Illinois. And I hope that continues. There's a lot of talent in the Chicago area. We don't only need to go there when the in-state Wisconsin class is light. We should have a presence in Illinois every year. Wisconsin, should I say we, but Wisconsin should have a presence in Illinois every year, picking one or two guys because you get a dude like this. Khalil Tate's still out there. JT Taylor, oh, excuse me. There's a lot of talent there that Wisconsin should be able to more, more often reach down and, and pluck out, especially in that high three, low four-star range. So, yeah, to wrap it up, everybody, you know, Jamel Howard, to me, great scheme fit. Check that box. Um, film looks good. Check that box. Comes in ready-made with size. Check that box. He's not a guy you have to project and say, we need to add 50 pounds to him. He's already got that that size and that that weight. So I, I love this pickup. I think it will pay huge dividends to Wisconsin. I think for them it's going to be much better than a, kind of a three-star pickup. I think he's going to play a lot, and I think he's going to be a big part of the defense. So, yeah, huge pickup for Wisconsin. Coming up, everybody, we're going to talk a little bit about the other big-time targets that are out there, where they're at in their official visits. Are they done taking official visits? Who they're down to? We're going to talk Tack. We're going to talk Kineholtz. We're going to talk Crocker. We're going to talk Tate. We're going to talk Gardner. So we're just going to run down the other really big prospects that are still out there in the pond that Wisconsin's trying to fish up. Uh, but first, today's show is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline remains your number one source for all your sports betting needs, information, latest odds, contests, player props, you name it. BetOnline is your best spot for all your latest sports developments, podcasts, reviews for all the leagues this season. And it's not just one sport. It's not just a basketball or a baseball or a football thing. It's all the sports plus live betting, live Vegas casino games. The website's easy to use. A great spot to go and put some money on futures. Who's going to win the NFC, the AFC next year? Who's going to take the pennants this year for baseball? You know, where where is the over-under for all your college football teams going to fall? All of that's on Bet Online. The website's super easy to use, intuitive, and there's a reason we use it at Locked On. It's a phenomenal source for sports information and gambling. Do it responsibly, please. Uh, but it's a lot of fun if you want to have five or ten dollars and just you know pick some fit, pick some futures, see who you can get good odds on, who you have a good feel on. Great time to do it. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device. Learn more about the trends and actions. Uh, Bet Online, where the game starts. Thank you guys again for making Locked On Badgers your first listen, one of your first listens every day. Uh, I appreciate it. I say it all the time, and I hope it doesn't get old. I don't mean to beat a dead horse. I really appreciate everybody listening, everybody commenting. It means a lot to me. I try to respond to everybody. I try to get more people on the show. So if you like it, uh, just please continue listening and supporting. And we're going to continue getting you, the community, that Badger community, the best content we can because that's the goal 100% to keep it real. Let's get into the next segment. So we talked – you know, the, the big commitment from Howard, I want to jump into, there's been a lot of pretty high profile official visits up to Wisconsin, you know, and I want to just kind of run through the quick checklist of who we're still waiting on, where they're at, and just my gut feel on all these guys. So Lincoln Kynolds, the quarterback, this is, an, is such an important commitment, such an important recruitment for this class. Hopefully it leads to a commitment, but such an important player in this class because Wisconsin really isn't not in on any other quarterbacks. This is it. And I'm sure they're going to be able to pivot somewhere if Kineholtz commits elsewhere. Maybe maybe they go into the transfer portal. Maybe they they turn their attention to some committed player and they try to get into flip season. But for now, all the eggs are in the Kineholtz basket. So he finished his Washington visit. He's taken all of his official visits at this point. And from, from everything we've heard, it sounds like it's 
down to likely Wisconsin and North Dakota State, the Bison. And it's, it's going to be one of those two spots. You know, and, and many years ago, this probably wouldn't have been a big deal. Probably would have been a layup. But now you look at some of the quarterbacks North Dakota State's put in the league. Just recently, Trey Lance, who's a first-round pick, number three overall. They have, like many schools, a better pedigree developing quarterbacks in Wisconsin. And I think it matters. It's also his home, you know, much closer to his home state, his hometown. Easier for family to see him. There's probably more of a comfort level there. At the end of the day, we had John Garcia Jr. on. He said, you know, usually the Big Ten school here, the school at the first official visit is going to win out. That's where my gut has me. I think Kynolds ends up as a, as a Badger in this class. It's a big time, would be a big time addition. I really like his film as quarterback, athletic guy, three star, you know, three sport athlete can get up and dunk the ball with two hands. So you see some of the athleticism, you know, a lot of different arm angles on the throw can move around. I, I think it'd be a really good addition this late in the cycle. One of the faster rising quarterbacks in, in the recruiting process. So that's a big one to keep your eyes on, everybody. Lincoln Kynolds, uh, all done with official visits, and now it sounds like it's going to be a Wisconsin or North Dakota State battle. Now let's go on to Khalil Tate, who I've said before, if he commits today, if he commits tomorrow, he would instantly be – I still think this is true, even with Jamel Howard committing, even with a couple other players committing. I think Khalil Tate would still be my favorite recruit in this class if he committed. Now, if Tackett Curtis ends up committing, yeah, let's, let's change that up. But I love Khalil Tate's film. Big, physical, hard-hitting safety, six foot two, six foot three. Athleticism abounds. Plays physical on film. The film backs up the athletic me athletic measurables. Uh, he he just finished his Iowa visit. Chances are this is a Wisconsin Iowa battle for Tate, who's also out of Illinois and, and good friends with some of the other Illinois prospects that Wisconsin's landed. So that should help Wisconsin. There they have commitments from uh, some of Khalil Tate's friends. So that's a big deal. However, Iowa. Puts out defensive backs a lot better than Wisconsin. They, they have a better track record at this point of developing those players. So you can definitely see why Tate would be interested in becoming a Hawkeye. They just developed defensive backs better than the Badgers have. This would be a big time bummer if we lost him to Iowa because I think he's a difference maker potentially. These are all the potential guys. I get that. But I think he's a potential difference maker. Wisconsin doesn't get a lot of people with his size and speed on the back end. And you can start to look ahead and say, what does this secondary start to look like if you can get a Khalil Tate, you pair him with a Wohler, you pair him with a Jace Arnold, you pair him with an Austin Brown, right? It starts to get kind of fun. I think Khalil Tate would be a big part of that secondary puzzle if he could come on board. So he finished his, his official visits. I think it's going to be Wisconsin-Iowa battle. I have no inside read on this, everybody. I have no gut feel. I, I actually, if I had to put somebody on it, I would probably say Iowa just because of their track record for developing defensive backs. Joe Crocker. We talked about Crocker a lot. Probably the the highest upside offensive lineman on Wisconsin's board in this recruiting cycle. He just finished off his Michigan State official visit. No more official visits. It's going to be Wisconsin or Michigan State, if you believe anybody. And that gets us into that, you know, that that whole Saeed Khalif, you know, recruiting battle where, where Michigan State took Saeed Khalif and he rebuilt whatever he wanted to his likeness at Michigan State. So, it would be – it's kind of personal, I feel like. I feel like the message boards are going to melt down a little bit if Joe Crocker picks Michigan State, if Saeed Khalif beats Wisconsin head-to-head -head for an offensive lineman, which should be Wisconsin's bread and butter. I think it would be um, a frustrating loss because Wisconsin was in, was in on Crocker early. So is Michigan State, but Wisconsin has the pedigree at offensive line. Bob Bosted's moving over. This is the type of, of player Bosted – has developed into pros, right? And I think that's the the selling point for Wisconsin. I just think Michigan State is so much recruiting mojo right now. I hate to try to predict this one way or the other, but Joe Crocker has finished up his official visits. That decision is probably coming pretty soon. Uh, let's get into Mikhail Gardner, Mikhail Gardner. He's a defensive lineman, um, big time prospect. Got Wisconsin got him up on campus. Unfortunately, it sounds like this one is leaning away. He's taken if all done with his official visits. He's taken. Texas, Oregon, Michigan. It sounds like Michigan is leading here, which is such a shame. Gardner's film is ridiculous, and he would be awesome to pair with uh, what we've already – kind of what we've already brought in on the defense line this class. But it sounds like Mikhail Gardner is, is probably not coming to Madison. Braden Marshall. So I've talked about Braden Marshall a couple times. Just wrapped up his North Carolina official visit. No more scheduled. So he's been to Pitt, North Carolina, UCF, and Wisconsin. I feel really good about this one. I think, I think Marshall's headed to Madison. And – to, to pair him up with Jace Arnold. And again, if we can loop back and get Khalil Tate, if you, if you have a Jace Arnold, Braden Marshall, Khalil Tate, um, AJ Tisdell, 
a J, even JT Taylor, like that is such a good secondary class for Wisconsin, but it hinges on winning Khalil Tate's battle and it hinges on finishing off Braden Marshall. I think Marshall's coming. He has incredible short area quickness, explosiveness, really be a really good commit. High, high three-star guy finished up his official visits. And now, now, now we wait. He has one more if he wants to use it, but I think uh, he might be done. And let's get into the, the big kahuna here. Tackett Curtis, Right, we've talked about tax so many times. The the Uber blue chip four or five four to five star linebacker out of Louisiana. You know, he's down to three schools, everybody. Tackett has taken all of his official visits that he wants to take. It's gonna be Wisconsin, USC, or Ohio State. And I, I have to tell you, I don't I I think Wisconsin has such a good relationship with Curtis that it just comes down to does he feel like what it, it comes down to does he feel like Wisconsin can compete at the highest level? I that's not based on inside knowledge, everybody. That's just wh where I feel like the struggle is for Tackett because I think if the Wisconsin Ohio State programs were equal, he would have already committed to Wisconsin. And I have had the ability to talk to you know his head head coach a little bit. They are so high on Wisconsin and the relationships they've built with Wisconsin that I think the only fly in the ointment is. Quite frankly, Wisconsin has fallen short against the elite programs. And if you want to play at the highest level, you know, if that's a big goal of yours, you should go to Ohio State, right? If that's the most important thing. So I don't know. I, I don't have a great feel. I do know for a fact Wisconsin is very much in this, it, very much alive. And we're going to see what happens pretty soon because there's no more official visits for TAC. It's between those three schools. So really quick, just to wrap all that up, everybody, I, I hope nobody's eyes glossed over. A couple big prospects still out there. Uh, Lincoln Kineholtz. If I was going to say the importance of these, it's Kineholtz, it's uh, Tackett Curtis, Braden Marshall, Khalil Tate. Like if if they can get those three, Tate, Kineholtz, and Tackett Curtis, or those four, sorry, and Braden Marshall, that would be an incredible quartet to bring to Madison. Upgrade talent, upgrade athleticism, get the quarterback. Secondary gets a major boost, and Tackett Curtis is just an absolute star. So that's where we're at with some of those big prospects, everybody. I hope you found that enlightening and enjoyed it. Coming up, we are going, I'm going to revisit just a little bit my my interview and my conversation with Gus Yaldon. I want to talk about what impressed me the most with his interview. That's coming up next on Locked on Badgers. Hey everybody, welcome back to Locked on Badgers. Really appreciate as I as I say continually everybody tuning into the show, supporting the show. So on Saturday, I had the opportunity to talk to Gus Yaldon, the four-star forward slash center uh, basketball commit for 2023. And I just wanted to loop back because I was thinking about it a lot after I talked to him. And I wanted to loop back and really, really talk about what impressed me so much. So I've, I've already been on the record, right? Even before he committed, excuse me, even when a lot of people thought that he was maybe heading to a Louisville or somewhere else, I, I, was ne I never wavered. I thought... He was going to be a star. I still think he's going to be a star. I think it's a big time commitment. I think he's underrated as a four star at the college level. Again, we're we're recruiting for the college level, not for future pros. At the college level, he's going to be a star, and I always thought that. But then talking to him, he he thinks the game at such. You, you, there's certain time people you can talk to, and you just kind of know that they know what they're talking about, right? It, it's not made up. There's no BS. He's not blowing smoke when you ask him. How how would he attack himself defensively? I mean, he just instantly launched into, I'm, I would sit on the right. As soon as I put the ball down, I would send someone to dig, but then I'd get back to my shooter. It was such a self-aware conversation uh, from Gus's standpoint that I was I was so impressed. It felt like I was talking to a 24, 25-year-old assistant coach and not a 17, 18-year-old coming into a college program. I, you know, I asked him about, where does the intangibles come from? Like you, you take charge of this stuff. He said, you know, I, I had to learn that at IMG. Cause he went down to IMG, which if, if you don't know, IMG is an elite high school in Florida that basically recruits high school kids and the best of the best play there. It's a, it's a prestigious program. And he said, I went down to IMG and suddenly I was surrounded by all these great players. And I had to learn to do all these little things. And again, some players would go down to IMG and they would never have the self-awareness to say, I need to do all these little things. I need to take charges and make the extra pass and hustle and, and rotate, you know, correctly and play the pick and roll correctly. He, he did that. And he said, I came back with an awareness that, you know, not everybody does the little things and doing the little things is actually a skill. It's a talent. It, you know, I was so impressed by that entire conversation. Um, the, the idea that he can break down, you know, if you, if you haven't heard it, listen to him talk about, 
the counters he's working on, finding ways to get back to his sweet spot on the court, you know, putting the ball up on his chin, the low cross back into that left block, you know, working on a one foot fade away from that left block area, you know, and then you, he starts breaking down what happens if you're doubled and, you know, you can't double me because I'm going to ping it here and it's going to be the cutter or the shooter on the opposite wing. I feel like I'm rambling a little bit here, but I, I just wanted to recap it again after I had a, a second to digest it because I thought it was awesome. I thought, and I, I've already heard that. Like I'd heard scouting reports and other people would talk to him and say, this guy's really smart. His basketball, basketball IQ is really high. Having talked to him, yeah, that's confirmed. Check, check in the box. This dude is going to be a star, Badger fans. If you're not on the Gus Yeldon bandwagon, if you're not on the train, if you're not on the Gus bus, you better buy a ticket. Okay, buy a ticket because by year two, it may not happen right, but by year two, that bus is going to be filled up and it's going to be making stops at, at you know Indianapolis in the Final Four. It's going to be making stops all over the place. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be a star. I already thought he was going to be a great player. I love the film. I love the fit. Um, and I think there's a little bit of the NBA might not lure him out of Madison right away because he's not doesn't fit their their athletic profile necessarily. So you could have him for several years, even though he's going to be, I think he's going to be an elite college basketball post player. So I just wanted to, to kind of rehash that. Let me know if you guys disagree or if you had the same kind of thoughts when you listened to the interview. As always, everybody, I really appreciate everybody listening to this show. Um, it, the, the support has been humbling. If you like it, it does really help if you subscribe, if you leave a review, if you leave a like. Coming up this week, we got some bangers. We're going to have um, a very special guest from a, a very fan favorite Badgers podcast jumping on the show. We're going to talk State of the Union Badgers football. How's the program trending? What's Paul Chris doing? We're also going to have a big time roundtable State of the Union basketball show. I think Brian Calhoun's going to be jumping on the show, former Badger running back. Great. Yeah, lots and lots of, of good content coming up. So, yeah, I hope everyone keeps tuning in. Really appreciate it. Until we talk to you later on Wisconsin.